I welcome everybody who is interested in science and today I will discuss a neurological alteration that presumably led to the withdrawal of Simon Biles from the ongoing Olympic Games. Also, I will talk how this condition is treated, what kind of medicine Simon took and whether it could have given an advantage in sports competitions and what happened to her treatment in Tokyo. As usual, stay tuned and you will know all the details. Simon Biles is an American artistic gymnast who currently has 31 Olympic and World Championship medals, including four Olympic medals from 2016 Olympic Games in Rio. Oh. Not surprisingly that before the start of the Olympics in Tokyo, she was considered as one of the main favorites in all disciplines in artistic gymnastics. However, in Tokyo, Biles firstly pulled out of the team final and currently also missed several individual finals. The named reason is so-called twisters, uh, the phenomenon that can cause gymnasts to lose their sense of space and dimension in mid-air, even if they perform the same maneuver for years without any problems. So she said that she really cannot tell up from down, which meant that she had no idea of how she was going to land or what part of her body she was going to land on. Uh, and I mean, she named it as a, the craziest feeling ever. And apparently the reason of this twist was not physical, but rather mental. As Belle confirmed herself, physically she felt good, but had some emotional disturbances. So what did cause this twist is not exactly known, but some of the versions state that it could be due to the withdrawal of the medicine named methylphenidate or Ritalin that Biles used to combat with her ADHD. The medical condition I'm going to shortly explain in a moment. Even though by the time I'm recording this video, it's not clear whether Biles benefited from Yakan Shume. Uh, I'm not sure whether I pronounced this uh, term correctly, but it is an import certificate allowing uh, for the import of some otherwise prohibited drugs, including methylphenidate, to Japan. If she could not, why? However, if she could, the additional exceptional stress and you know psychological pressure could still boost some ADHD-related symptoms. I'm sure that later we will hear more about this case, but nevertheless, ADHD that Biles have and its treatment is an important topic to cover. So therefore, let's try to dig a bit more into this case. And also, it's crucial to understand the basics of the pathology to derive the conclusions about this case. So let's start. What are you waiting for? Chinese New Year? Go, go! Briefly, ADHD or Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder is a neurodevelopmental disorder that in general is characterized by um, maladaptive and extensive inattention, hyperactivity and impulsivity. The development abnormality in case of ADHD is resembled by malfunctioning of two neurotransmitter systems, dopamine and noradrenaline, also named norepinephrine. The dopamine and norepinephrine are produced in two regions uh, of the brain named ventral tegmental area and locus coeruleus, and are further delivered to diverse regions of the brain influencing a variety of cognitive processes, including motivation, reward perception and motor function. But what is altered? To answer this question, let's take a look on the signals. A structure that permits a neuron to pass an electrical or chemical signal to another neuron. So here's a neuron sending a signal and here's the one receiving it. In these vesicles we have stored neurotransmitters, dopamine or noradrenaline in our case. So these neurotransmitters are released in the synapse during the signaling. In the synapse they bind to the postsynaptic receptors provoking the further neurotransmission of the signal. So logically, the amount of this neurotransmitter is proportional to the signal intensity, right? In case of ADHD, you have less of these neurotransmitters in the synaptic left. Therefore, the signal processing is altered. Then our brain does like, dude, we have to do something with that, right? We need to perform actions that will boost the amount of these neurotransmitters. But we just discussed that dopamine and neuroadrenaline govern what? Motivation, motor function and uh, reward perception, right? Therefore, what ADHD patients do to increase these neurotransmitters, right? For instance, uh, they show an increased activity, also referred as hyperactivity, and they will seek for more immediate rewards, ultimately leading to attention deficit. You kind of don't want to focus on something for an extensive period of time, like doing homework or sitting in a class at school, but rather to perform actions that will lead to an immediate reward, for instance, running around and playing games. Once you complete these actions, for instance, achieved an immediate reward while in active movements, the levels of dopamine and noradrenaline go up, but just for a while, and once the levels drop back, and they will, because of the discussed altered neurodevelopment. You should uh, repeat the circle. Kind of horrible thing if you imagine this, because um, it does interfere with your daily life and it's very distracting. Moreover, people who are around you may not understand the origin and may just think you are a weak jerk uh, who cannot do things in a normal way. In fact, um, between 50 and 80% of kids with ADHD are classified as rejected by their peers. 
Also, in, uh, as, a, as of 2019, ADHD was estimated to affect more than 80 million people globally. In the US, ADHD affects about 10% of children and adolescents. Which is a lot, I'm guessing. But how do we treat this disorder? For mild symptoms, the behavioral therapy may be enough to help a patient to develop a way to combat with the symptoms. However, for more severe cases, doctors do prescribe medicines. How does this medical treatment work? For instance, this was the one that Simon Biles took. Let's go back to the synaptic view. The drug stops so-called reuptake process. The idea is that once the signal is transmitted, we have to clear the synaptic cleft, allowing the passage of the next signal. However, hampering of this reuptake process will lead to an increase in extracellular concentration of these neurotransmitters and will provoke a subsequent increase in the neurotransmission. Therefore, by hindering the clearance of the synapse, we can restore the levels of neurotransmitters in ADHD patients. Awesome! Now, once we understand the basis of the pathology and its treatment, let's discuss how this treatment affects cognitive and motor capabilities and whether it can give some advantages to healthy controls in case they take the same pills. Not having ADHD. There are indeed reports of healthy people taking methylphenidate, for instance, some students use it as a study and test taking aid. However, the recent study revealed that methylphenidate increases your cognitive motivation, so your perceived benefits of performing a demanding task are elevated, while the perceived costs are reduced. Importantly, this effect is separated from any changes in actual ability, so you do not become smarter, but just more motivated. Uh, therefore, uh, this thing is that methylphenidate is not really like an anxiety uh, pill from Limitless, <laughs> if you know what I'm talking about. I was blind, but now I see. But what about your motor skills? Yes, methylphenidate does help to improve concentration and motor coordination to the patients diagnosed with ADHD. But interestingly, um, the other study exposes no differences in the key physiological parameters in kids taking uh, methylphenidate compared to the healthy ones. In fact, some parameters such as motor balance and agility were still lower in ADHD kids uh, undergoing treatment compared to healthy ones, suggesting that if you are an ADHD patient, then methylphenidate will help you to restore some altered capacities, but not skyrocketing your performance. However, the weakness of this logic is um, that we discussed uh, the research findings published for kids, not top athletes. Obviously, the physiology is different, and indeed, there are studies confirming that methylphenidate is performance-enhancing, dangerous and unfair if used by healthy participants. However, when used by ADHD patients, the studies disclose no significant improvements of the performance, but rather reveal a correction of previously hampered capabilities. For me, for me, the message is that uh, methylphenidate, is, uh, when used by ADHD patients, doesn't bring an advantage, but if taken by a healthy athlete, will bring benefits. Therefore, not surprisingly, it is considered as a performance-enhancing drug, and you need to have a therapeutic use exemption that gives athletes the authorization to take uh, the needed medicine. So therefore, if we believe that Simon Biles have ADHD and took methylphenidate to combat with it, it's a normal situation. However, to be fair, we should consider a hypothetical situation that she somehow faked the ADHD. Um, I don't know how practically it may be possible, taking into account all these checks inspections, but let's consider that it could have somehow been done. Thus, in that case, uh, she used methylphenidate uh, to dominate all these years. And now I will explain why I personally do not believe in this theory. It's not true. Firstly, it's known that she got the diagnosis as she was a kid and took the medicine till nowadays. So could she know back in the days that she gonna be a top athlete? I doubt it. Secondly, even though I'm not a gymnastic expert, but I have heard about uh, Simon Biles' performances, she did the elements that have not been done before. And one of the reasons the experts bring is the structure of her body and extensive muscles. So Ritalin will not make you more muscular and, as was explicitly shown by one of the paper, will not affect your height, weight or body mass index. However, you may ask me, but then this tiny additional uh, advances in motor coordination could have been a decisive addition to her talent, body and trainings. Could be. But the weakness of this approach is that uh, Simon Biles was dominating for years. And if this was all about Ritalin and faking IDG, why only she could do it? Why other athletes couldn't follow the same path? You know, it's, uh, it's like finding a hole in the laws or when hackers find a bug. Uh, not only one person uses it once it's revealed and not fixed. So here you can tell me, but it's because she was uh, from the US. These guys control water. 
but okay, uh, even assuming this, but why only she from the US team could do it? Or why only now? If you consider Ritalin as a kind of a hypothetical elixir that brings superpower to the athletes like Asterix and Obelisk, <laughs> the question is, where was Panoramix all these years when the US team was at the top but was not dominating, <laughs> like in 2012 or 2008? Why exactly in 2016 US team decided, aha, now we use our power and, and a secret elixir to nail the competitions in Rio? Because they didn't like Brazil? This is Brazil! The other question you can ask me, but wait a second, you explain Simon Biles' case. Okay, but why there are other athletes like Michael Phelps and Williams sisters who also take similar medicines in their sports? And they are also top athletes and they are from the US. Huh. Okay, firstly, the exact diagnostic criteria is not fully accepted in some countries, and there are indeed points that are subject to an ongoing scientific discussion. But in the US, ADHD is diagnosed more often. Secondly, what is one of the first recommendations to the parents of a child diagnosed with ADHD? Bring your kid to some kind of a sport! Because, as we discussed, ADHD patients do feel the necessity to be involved in a physical activity in higher degree compared to their peers. Thus, it does make sense to bring them to some sports sections. Uh, combining these two factors together, higher diagnostic rates, and the explicit recommendation to bring ADHD kids to sports, we arrive to just higher probability that in the US there will be more athletes which, with ADHD in sports. So this is why I personally believe in the version that Simon Biles does have ADHD and took Ritalin or Methylphenidate to combat with it. Again, this is my personal view, but I do think that the potential withdrawal from the medicine taking for years together with a super pressure at the Olympics made a mixture that Simon Biles couldn't handle. And in this perspective her withdrawal decision is completely understandable. I really hope that people who watch this video till this moment now realize the complexity of this medical condition and will not just drop offensive messages to the athlete that during the years put in risk her health, both mental and physical, to bring her country on top. I'm saying it being a Russian and truly and genuinely supporting my national team in these Olympics. But supporting your team doesn't mean insulting others. Hope Simbios could handle this tough time. If you like this video, please give it a thumb up, it does help to understand your preferences. Also, if you have a different view to what I've described in the video, feel free to share your ideas in the comments. Every comment will receive a response. And I hope we can have a productive discussion, because the topic is quite uh, important. And if you are interested in neuroscience in general, or like to solve math problems, yeah, try it if you didn't consider this option before. Feel free to subscribe to the channel, allowing all notifications. In that case, you will not miss new, cool, scientific stuff. And for now, I hope to see you soon.